Good afternoon everyone, my name is Max. I'm a technician here at Hilltop RV. I'm gonna show you how to winterize your coach properly today. First things first, we're gonna to wanna to drain our tank system. Our tank system includes our fresh water tank, it includes our dump tanks, our black tank, and our gray tank. We're gonna to wanna to make sure those are empty. Finding those valves is gonna be located underneath your coach. Sometimes on a fresh water tank, it'll be a hose hanging down with a valve or a cap on the end of it. We're gonna to wanna to make sure those are drained. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to find our water pump big question I get is where is my water pump? Well, I can't actually answer that. You're going to have to find that on your own and how you do that is by turning your water pump on and listening for it. If you let it run dry for a few minutes, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to hurt the pump, but we'll be able to listen to it. I found them under the bed, behind compartments, behind sinks and basements, things of that nature. You're just going to have to look around. Sometimes you'll find an access panel that's by the water pump that will help you out. Usually they'll have screws in it or something like that so we can access the panels. Those are going to take a number two square head screw. Once we find our pump, we're going to have to determine what kind of pump it is. There's two different types of pumps. There's one with a threaded end, and there's one that have a quick connect fitting. You're going to pull the blue tab out, the hoses will pop out. Here at Hilltop, we have different hoses that we can use to help winterize your coach. This is one that we have here. We have them assembled inside the store that you can buy, buy here in the back. The one thing we do have here is our pump and our simulated water tank on my little system here. And what we're going to do first is we're going to find the water pump and we're going to bypass it. So what we're going to do is we're going to find this. We're going to shut our water valve off make sure that we have no water coming out of our fresh water tank. Once we found our pump, the second thing we're going to do is find the rear of our water heater and we're going to want to bypass the water heater as well. Water heaters are going to have up to four different type of bypasses. Sometimes we'll have a hard water, hard connection that will just go with for the inlet and outlet. We'll have to pull those off and connect those together. Those are pretty rare nowadays. More than likely you're going to have a one valve, two valve, or three valve system. One valve system will have one valve down here. Now it's going to have what's called a ball valve. This ball valve, when the lever is in line, with the line, that means it's on to that direction. If you look over here, on this valve here, if I turn this valve this way, the water is flowing through this way into the water tank and back out. If I close the valve and go this way, it's going to divert the water through what's called the bypass system. Now this is a two valve system, so what I'm going to do is I'm closing both these valves to stop water from going inside the tank so it comes bypasses and goes directly to the sink. Once we do that, we can drain our tank, and draining our water heater tank is going to be in two ways. It's either going to be a, pl a plastic plug that is underneath on here on what is called an Atwood model, or it'll be an anode rod. This is the perfect time if you do have an anode rod to check your anode rod to see if it is in good shape or not. Even though this does look bad, this is a still great shape. 70% of it can be gone and it still be functional. This is a still a good one. This is when we're starting to worry about replacing it. This is definitely needs to be replaced. And if you see this, of course it definitely needs to be replaced. We're going to want to pull those out and keep those completely drained. And uh, once we drain that, we're going to want to store our water heater anode rod and our plugs. We store everything inside the water heater compartment so we remember where it is in the springtime. Once we want to drain that, like I said, we want to leave everything out, we can start winterizing our coach. What we're going to do first is we're going to unhook from our pump, from the inlet side. Now what is the inlet side? The inlet side on your pump is going to be located with an arrow. The flow is going in this direction. Another easy way to tell is they'll usually have a filter on it. The filter is on the inlet system to keep debris from going inside your pump. Right there is where we're going to pull it off to hook up our water, our winterization hose. Now when we do unhook these lines, you're going to want to make sure you do have a rag handy or some kind of towels because things are going to get wet. It is inevitable. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to hook up my hose to my water pump. And this hose here is going to go into our antifreeze jug. What we're going to want to do at that point is pressurize our system. 
once I turn it on, you can hear the pump running, but you notice it's still not pressurized and shut off because it's not drawing anything. There's air lock in the line. If this happens, what we're going to want to do is open up a valve on the sink so the water will flow through, and now the pump shuts off because it's properly pressurized. Now after you do that, if your pump is not pressurizing and you're still pulling in antifreeze, chances are you did not bypass your water heater. Now that's the other reason why I take keeping the plug out of it, because we'll see the water and the antifreeze drain out the plug. But since our system is properly bypassed, our system is pressurized. Now what I want to do first is I want to go to the farthest faucet in the coach, away from the pump. It's the easiest to, to do and to get the most antifreeze inside the system. The first thing I want to do is open up the cold water line until I get pink coming out of the line. Then I want to open up the hot water line and do the same thing and open it until I get pink coming out of the line. Once I do that, I like to let that one run a few minutes longer so it fills the P-trap underneath the sink with antifreeze. Now I'm going to do that. I only have one faucet here, but this is to simulate all faucets on a coach. And we're going to do that with every faucet on the inside of the coach. Once we get pink coming out of all of them, we're going to take any extra antifreeze and we're going to dump it down the drains a little bit to make sure that we have antifreeze in all our P-traps. It's very important to put extra antifreeze into our shower drain or our tub drain because it's very costly and very hard to repair. The second, th next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on the outside of the coach. Some of our coaches have outside kitchens and outside water systems, uh, outside showers, faucets, things of that nature. We've got to winterize those as well. One thing I do not want to forget about winterization is if you have a washing machine, a dishwasher, or an ice maker in your coach, you're going to want to winterize those as well. Once we go on the outside of the coach, we're going to winterize our outside shower, our city water connection, and if we have a sewer flush, we're going to want to winterize that as well. Now once we did the same thing with the faucet on the outside, by turning on the cold and getting pink out of it, and then turning on the hot and getting pink out of it. What we're going to want to do at that point is we're going to want to go back inside the coach, we're going to want to shut our pump switch off, and we're going to want to open up a faucet valve to depressurize the system. Once we depressurize the system, we can begin to winterize the city water connection. Now the city water connection has a screen over it, like this. What we're going to have to do is you can take a screwdriver, a pencil, a knife, and we're going to pop this out. And it's very important at this point to make sure your system is depressurized. If you don't, you'll get a jet of water out of here. What we want to do inside here is a little push button, and we're going to want to push that until I get pink coming out of the system. Once I get pink coming out of the hose here, that we know that our city water connection is properly winterized. The next thing we want to do is if we have a sewer flush, we're going to want to winterize that as well. How we're going to do that is with a hand pump. We're going to hook this up to our, our sewer flush, stick this into our winterization jug, and fill it up. How much are we going to use? It all depends on the coach. I like to listen for it to see if I can hear it running inside the black tank. Can't always hear that, but it's cheaper to put a little extra antifreeze in something than have something go wrong. The other question I get is how much antifreeze am I going to use? Well, most antifreeze, in most coaches, you're going to use no more than three gallons of antifreeze, depending on the biggest coach. Most coaches I, I winterize only take a gallon and a half to two gallons. Once we do that and we get our city water connection and our sewer flush winterized, what we're going to want to do after everything is said and done, as you can see in my little system here, you can see my lines are all pink through here, except my low point drain. There's still water in that line as well. What we're going to want to do there is we're going to want to drain that last. Find my screw gun. Now we're not letting the antifreeze out of the system, what we're doing is letting any residual water that's puddled in the bottom of our lowest point drains to drain out so we can get any kind of fresh water that's out of there and antifreeze can go in. 
As you can see, I still have pink in all my lines because the antifreeze is staying there. It's not going to come out. It's the same way on your coach. Now, we're going to leave all these valves open. We're going to leave our sink valves, our faucet valves all open for the winterization. We're going to leave our water heater in bypass mode, and we're going to leave the drain plug out. I store everything inside the water heater compartment. The one thing that I can't stress enough to do is make sure that when we're done that we hook the water tank back up. We're going to unhook our winterization hose. Now you always see you can get water out here. That's why I have a towel under here. It's, it's inevitable that you are going to get water that's going to drain out of, your, out of the pump. So we're going to want to make sure we have a rag underneath there. I'm going to hook this back up. And I have pink all the way through all my lines. And that's what I want to see inside the coach. Now, granted, we can't see all the lines inside the coach, but knowing that we got pink through the faucets and the exterior faucets, city water connection, and so forth, we know that it's properly winterized. Again, if you're uncomfortable doing this, we do offer this service here at Hilltop for a reasonable fee. Other things you want to take in consideration when winterizing your coach is battery maintenance, an overall inspection of your coach. In the winter time, we want to remove our battery completely from our coach. The first thing you want to do is remove your negative cable, then your positive cable. If you're confused on which one is negative and which one is positive, you can look on top of your battery and see the positive symbol and negative symbol and mark the cables accordingly. Once we remove those, again, we want to remove the negative cable first, then the positive cable. When reinstalling the battery in the summertime, we want to install the positive cable first, then the negative cable. It creates a situation where we have no sparks. Again, we want to properly store our battery in a cool, dry place for the, the winter so it doesn't freeze. That's what we're trying to prevent. The other thing that we want to talk about is doing a roof inspection on your coach. This is ample time to do any kind of preventative maintenance on your coach. We're going to want to inspect our roof to make sure that there's no holes, tears, or cracks in any of the sealant around any of the windows or compartments up there. We want to make sure of that. We want to try to cover up our tires. And if we can cover up our coach, cover it up, period. Well, there's other things that we want to do is by making sure our, our, all our compartment doors are completely secure so we can keep pests like rodents, squirrels, chipmunks, things like that out of our coaches. We do make a lot of uh, products out there. There are fresh cab rodent repellents, which is a nice deodorizer, but it's also a rodent repellent and they smell good. I do not recommend using mothballs. Mothballs will stay, that, that smell will stay in your coach for a long time. There's also a product that we got called Dry Z Air, which is a desiccant, which will help remove moisture out of the air so it will take that musty smell out of your coach. If you have any questions on winterizing your coach or any concerns like that, you can contact us here at Hilltop and we can answer all your questions. Again, if you don't feel comfortable to do it, we offer that service here and we're more than glad to walk, it, walk through it with you.